And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, how are you doing? Is everything all right? We are going to have a wonderful meeting, right? We're going to hear the good word of God, and it doesn't matter what your present condition might be. Right now, what matters is your reaction while the word of God is being preached and that the Lord opens up your understanding. The eyes of the Lord are not on your face if you've been forcing a smile or if you have been sad, he's looking at your heart. The kind of attention you devote to the word of the Lord God, this is what determines how God's going to work. And when the Lord God works, you can be absolutely sure that he is going to do many wonders in your behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord will certainly fulfill that which he has promised. Whenever he speaks here or anywhere, if it has really touched your soul, believe that. At that exact moment, the power of God springs into action and his work is accomplished in the name of the Lord Jesus. And what if the Lord did a miracle in your life? Ah, Dr. Schwartz, I would be very happy. I can assure you that he wants to do that. But you need to pay attention to his words so that the Lord may bring out your faith. Without faith, it is impossible. Faith is sort of like electrical wiring. It won't help if the power plant, if you live next door to a, the, um, the power plant, and you, have, you need electricity to power your house, but there's no connection. It won't work. You may pray, power plant, send me power. I'm in the dark here. It's way too cold. I need to heat up the water. I have some, I have some work to do. I have to, but there's no electrical wiring. We can't help you. Faith is this electrical wiring. It's this strength that comes through all of your understanding, which once you receive it all, you don't even have to push too hard. You just have to believe. When you do believe, the Lord will bless you. As the word of the Lord God says, open up your Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 23. Let us study a big verse here. This is going to, to clarify some things to us. The verse is quite short, and apparently it doesn't have all that much to say, but it does. And that's why it's in the Holy Bible. It has many lessons that will help open our eyes and prepare us all for a miracle. My dear friends, in all of Proverbs 23, verse number 19, it is written, Hear, my son, and be wise. First of all, let us understand something right now. When we hear the word of the Lord of God and give it to our attention, we are abundantly empowered to totally become wise, to get rid of the problems that have been afflicting us, which might just be a common sickness or it may be a problem that's very serious indeed, something that appears to be absolutely impossible for us to achieve any type of deliverance from. Dear brother, hear it. My dear sister, hear it. Let the word of God enter your heart and keep on meditating on it. This is what hearing means. The word is speaking to you. It keeps on speaking to you. When you uh, pay attention to the little things God has said, for whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even when he has, will be taken away from him. So as the Bible saying, my son, everyone who hears the word of God is a child of God. Hear, uh, my son, and be wise. Make a decision so you may get rid of your problem. Don't hang out with all the defeated people, with rebellious people who don't want to know what the Lord God is doing. And he says more, and guide your heart in the way. And which way is he talking about? The way is what you have felt from the Lord God. It's a new way that he has created between you and him. Only you may walk this path. Now, the word says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. It is deceitful and is uh, desperately always wicked. It does not want to submit to the will of God, but you can guide it in the way. No, this is the way. I'm going to seek the Lord. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm really tired from preaching and fighting. But this thought comes to my mind. Do it later. No, do it now in the name of the Lord. Then I go to the bathroom. I wash my face like this. I brush my teeth and brush my hair. I change my clothes as if I were going out. Then I go to my office and I open up my heart before the Lord. It's at those times that I win the battles. I need to guide all of my heart. Your heart may be asking you to do something that you know is wrong. But in my case, it's not that wrong. It is. It's just like anybody else's case. Guide your own heart and you shall be blessed. Let us pray. Father, thank you for all of these words, for these wonderful teachings that have been opening up our eyes, that have been strengthening us. And today we want, oh God, to complete one other step. We want to hear and be wise and to guide our own hears in the way, Lord, 
We cannot stray from this path at all, and we are sticking to it before you, and I'm going to bless these people. As a minister of the word of the Lord, I rebuke all evil that's present in your life, and I say, come out in the name of Jesus, and amen. Let us continue to go a little deeper in this verse. Hear, my son, sometimes the husband wants the wife to hear, but if God is speaking to him, he needs to hear it. Or the wife wants the husband to hear, you need to hear. Lord, you are speaking to me now. Let me first hear and thoroughly learn the doctrine. When you feel that you're sharp in your understanding of God's word, you just say a prayer and your husband will be converted, your wife will be converted, your child will be converted. But you have got to hear. Listen here, my son. And what else? And be wise. My brother, God doesn't want anyone to remain a fool in his life. The Lord doesn't want anybody to waste this blessing. The Lord wants all of us to be wise. He wants us to have a far-reaching vision so we can discern things and be able to hold on to the blessing once it has been revealed. I've taken hold of it, Lord. This blessing is mine in the name of the Lord. And as you walk in the way, guide your heart. But Dr. Schwartz, you do not not really understand. My problem is this, this, and this. No. Heart, you will follow this. I will follow the direction God has given me. And suddenly, a new world opens up to you. Why? It is much better to be following the Lord's direction than to be breaking rocks out there. And God is going to bless you. Let us watch another person who's being blessed. Play this testimony, please. What's this here? Is it some kind of diploma? This is for, it was for support, right? I used to How walk. long have you walked with this cane? It's been about a year now. One year. And you couldn't walk without it? Couldn't, but I wasn't steady. I would stumble a you lot would stumble. and I almost fall. And, and now you're free. Yeah. So put the cane on your shoulder. Put it on your shoulder. You've just finished your work day. Walk now in the name of Jesus. How wonderful, right, folks? Glory to God. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause, right, folks? Listen, speaking of so many of Jesus' blessings, let us all open up our Bibles now to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21. And the, and the verse is 12, which has uh, um, a truly wonderful information for all of us. We are the all people that has been called in order to bring other people to the house of God. But sometimes we tend to speak way too much when we should not speak at all. Because the Bible says that those who are sent by God should only speak the words of God. Sometimes I feel like saying, I don't have something to say to you, but please give me a word. It's the same word God's already given you. Other times the Lord gives me a word. I have this serious message to give you. So here the word of God says this, the righteous man wisely considers the house of the wicked. Who is the wicked? The wicked is that person who might have already walked with the Lord, but who's lost respect for him. Unfortunately, there are people all like that. That'll give you all sorts of evil counsel. And if you listen to them, they start talking. Your hair stands on end and you start thinking, how can this person say so many stupid things? And these people do exist. But we should be wise and not condemn them. We should consider their house and appraise it. But why? Because some things are bound to happen over there that will make this person want to open up their eyes. Of course, if I'm talking to a person who's living in wickedness and so many bad things are being poured from their mouth, if I am able to use wisdom to sow a seed in their hearts, I'm going to do that. Sometimes I have to listen to 10,000 words to just say one and to have, and have that one word penetrate their heart. I'm considering their own house. They may have had a serious problem, and they often do. And my brother, do not play games with sin. Not today, not tomorrow, never, ever. And if you do stumble and fall, come before the Lord and say, Father, I've sinned. I need to confess I've done everything wrong because the Holy Spirit has convicted you. You have felt in your heart that you've sinned. That conviction already means that the Lord God wants to forgive you, and he does forgive. But don't, don't, don't continue to sin. But now, but now you'll have to go. No, you won't. You've made a commitment, but you've repented from it. Don't go, because if you do go, the enemy will have you in his hands and he'll do awful things to you. So the wicked continues to sin. He is rebellious and he does not care, but he's paying a steep price for that. If he's asked for your help and you've seen that he's truly willing to listen, do you want to listen? I do. The word of God says this and it says that, not condemning them, but showing them a way out in the word. And they'll be able to follow it because only God can change someone's heart. The father can't change the sons and the son can't change the fathers. The husband can't change the wives and the wife can't change the husbands. Only the Lord God's able to do that. 
then you're going to sow the seed in that person's very heart. And if they feel it, brother, I know I'm wrong. Pray for me, please. I will. Are you willing to forsake the sin now? Are you willing to start all over again? Are you willing to wipe the slate clean and start over? Because if they do not, if they carry on, that which happened was one instance, but there'll be another. And sometimes a person thinks, my God, what did I do 20 years ago? And I'm still paying the price today. The scriptures say, be sure your sin will find you out. It will find you. It's of no use. You can't possibly run away from any of your sin. And when it does come to find you, you'll have nothing but suffering, struggles, and the tough battles. So what you should do is to consider, but using wisdom, do it so wisely. Don't you start meddling in the person's life. Those who are wrong, they know that they are wrong. They don't have steadfastness. There is only one foundation in the world, which is the word of the Lord God. Those who live by it, it's secure as any rock. Those who are in the wrong, they know they are wrong. They don't feel secure. Then you have to pray for them. When the time comes, you'll be able to help that person. Did they ask you to pray for them? Pray. God heals. Thank you, brother. It worked. If the Lord is working, He is working. One of these days, they are going to enter um, the presence of the Lord. They'll come to you. The verse goes on to say this. The righteous man wisely considers the house of the wicked, but God overthrows the wicked for their wickedness. Sooner or later, they will be overthrown. That's when the time has come for you to show you are their friend, that you truly are a friend of theirs indeed. Then you should call that person and you should tell them, I want to help you. How bad is it? Very bad. I know it's because I departed from God. Ask the Lord God for wisdom. Sometimes a word you can say will be ill-spoken. What he needs is a shoulder that, that will listen to him cry, a place to put his head and open up his heart. Help me. What can you do for me? I can help you with everything now. You are going to begin a new life. You But have you made up your mind? Not entirely. Then you'll continue to have problems. No, I've made up my mind. Now I'll take a position. When the overthrowing, when it does come, that powerful force that overthrows and leaves their house in shambles. The only thing that will be able to help them is God's mercy and you'll need to be in tune with God to help them be delivered. Maybe this wicked person is you. Many people are in church praising the Lord, but only the Lord God knows what's in their mind, what, what, what's in their hands, their works, the deception the person is hiding. I feel sorry for this person. They've been paying such a terrible price, but they won't wake up but they must wake up. You need to intercede for them because if they continue on like that, they'll go to eternity and they'll be lost forever. And God does not want this to happen. What do we need to do? We need to consider and not condemn. Lord, it is happening. Awake that type of person. Awake them up. Remind the Lord of the good things that they've done and they may have helped you by bringing you to Christ. What else does it say? The righteous man wisely considers the house of the wicked, but God overthrows the wicked for their wickedness. They'll all be overthrown. It could be now, or it could be later, or at the end of their lives. And I have seen so many of them say, My God, why didn't I listen to you? Why didn't I wake up? Why didn't I pay attention? What that person needs is a friend. Lord, I am going to bring this person to you. And with wisdom, you will succeed. And if you manage to save them by snatching them out of the eternal fire, in addition to having caused a whole multitude of sins to be forgiven by God, you'll be able pleasing the Lord because it is the spirit of the good shepherd that leads all of us to call on the person and to try to bring them to the way. Unfortunately, some people will refuse it, but most of them will accept it and we are going to succeed. But I think that if we pray more, we'll be able to give even more success in the faith. Now, now we're going to go back to the verse we've read a little earlier in, in, in Proverbs 23 and verse number 19. Hear my son, hear my brother. The Spirit of God is speaking to you and be wise. Make the right decision. Stop disturbing the Lord God every single day. But I do not agree with that. Well, say, Lord, teach me because I have a rebellious heart, a wicked heart, and I want to learn the way that you are able to teach. You're going to become one of the most devoted Christians there is. 
You're going to learn the word the way it needs to be learned, and you will live it the way that it needs to be lived. And you will take your, um, your, you'll take your heart, and you will guide it in the way that the Lord God points out. God would never open up your understanding. Never. Put this in your heart. Even if 50 or 70 years go by, please remember this word. God would never open up your understanding about a way that's meant for you if you weren't supposed to walk in it. You must guide your heart through there. It's, it's this very simple thing. It starts with the wicked here, but when you understand it, you guide yourself. And when you do that, God clears the way from any temptation. He clears it from any wrong turn to give me the strength and the ability to, to take use of the riches he's been giving to you. Spiritual riches, revelations, power, and authority that will make you into a good person. Amen, brothers. I want to say a prayer the way I did during the last two services for people who have a problem in their hands. If you have a problem in your hands or in your fingers or in your knuckles, Dr. Swides, I'm young, but I've been having a problem and sometimes I have to do this in order to open my finger. I cannot open and close my hand. My wrist does not move the way it's supposed to move. I have a repetitive strain injury. I've had the most powerful tendinitis. I have arthritis, arthrosis. I haven't been able to lift my arms up or freely move them like this. I've been having difficulty touching my own back. Dr. Swides, would you please pray for me? I can. I'll pray for healing from the shoulders to the fingertips. Which of you have problems in your arms? or in your hands, lift your hand like this. Stand to your feet for your time has come now. Do it quickly, please. Do not delay. Open and close your hand. You can't lift your arm. You cannot itch your own back or brush your own hair. I've had a bad accident. I took a fall, Dr. Swadis. I know now you have arthritis, you have tendinitis or another problem, but the Lord is here to heal you. Now look at me. If you are going to pray with me now, the same way you've always done here or in another type of church. Nothing is going to happen. You need to change. After all, if this worked, it would have already worked. We're going to say the prayer of faith. We're not going to scream or yell or kick our legs. None of that. I'm going to pray for you calmly and firmly, and you're going to believe. While I'm praying, do not try and see if you can already open and close your hand. You need to stay focused on your faith. When I say, do what you were unable to do before, if you couldn't close your hand, go ahead and close it. You couldn't open it, open it. Couldn't twist it, twist it. And the same thing with the arm. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, I want to thank you for what you are about to do in the lives of all of these people. Of these people who are in need to be completely and totally delivered. And who are now asking for your healing for their, for their upper extremities healing for their shoulder where the shoulder ligaments have become loose father for the for the arms for the forearms for the wrists for the hands for the fingers for the different parts of the fingers the doctor may have he may have said that it's rheumatism a repetitive strain injury the doctor may he may have said that it's it's genetic problem that their nerves are actually dissolving or that they're coding. Oh Lord, that they're coding it has been damaged. The person feels electric shocks or cramps all day long. They took a fall or had a stroke, a CVA, or a motorcycle accident or some kind of, of sports injury. God, I ask you to personally come here and heal these people now, those who are here as well as those who are at home and move in the lives of these people in the name of Jesus. I now join my faith to the faith of these people. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke and I say, devil, it's over. Take everything that belongs to you now, every single pain, every sickness, every problem, and come out. I am not asking. I am commanding you now. Come out and take away the pain in their shoulder, their arm, their forearm, their wrist, their elbow, uh, their hands, fingers, digital bones, their carpal, metacarpal, their, 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 their nerves, or any other area, their muscles, their skin, or any other body part. Take away this tingling sensation. Take away this pain in the name of Jesus. And you say, thank you, Jesus. I believe. Look at me now. 
If you couldn't open and close your hands, do it now. You couldn't play the piano, do it now. Do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't lift up your arms, lift up your arms like this and do this. You couldn't do it before, now do it in the name of Jesus. That's right, do that. Oh, glory to God. Dr. Shradis, my pain has totally disappeared. Who can say that? Oh, glory, so many people. Tell me about it very quickly. What was wrong and how long? This brother up here in the front. It's gone. I was feeling a lot of pain in my elbow. The pain came out of nowhere. It was hurting a lot. I could not lift anything how with this arm. How about now? Now it's gone. Glory Thanks to, God. to God. Who else? You, my friend. I used to have trigger finger. This finger here, you know. When you closed? I was, I was going to undergo surgery. When you closed it, it wouldn't open. It, 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 it was hurting. It was. And uh, it, it was very numb, too. How you about know? now? Now it's normal. Glory to God. How about you, sister? My hand was tingling a lot, but it's now, gone now it's gone. Testify to God. so the devil will be put to shame. Don't sit down yet because God's still working. Your miracle would be the last one here today, you, my friend. Because of a repetitive strain injury, I couldn't move. Now it's but gone. Now, oh, glory to God. God. The green flag. Both my arms were numb. It's gone It's all now. gone now. The blue, the gone. blue flag. Because of a repetitive strain injury, my hand would stiffen whenever I forced it too much. And now oh, glory it's to God. gone. You, my friend. I used to have a cyst in the tendon from a fall that I took. And my hand was immobilized here. I removed the splint and showed it to the sister. The cyst had disappeared <laughs> from my hand. It's not there. For the glory of God, Our hallelujah. God is awesome, folks. You, sister. I took a fall some time ago. I broke one of my ribs. I supported my body with my arm. I couldn't twist it. I did it because I'm uh -huh. stubborn, you know. But now I'm feeling that I was totally healed. You're free now. In the name of Jesus. How wonderful. The green flag. When I was exercising this morning, Dr. Suarez, I couldn't rotate my arm sideways, but now it's okay. Look. <laughs> oh, glory to God. The blue flag. Dr. Suarez, I was having pain in my arm since Wednesday. Now it's gone. It's gone now. It never fails. That sister there by, by, by the wall. Me. Yes. Two years ago, I broke this wrist, and it had been hurting a lot these days. But thanks be to God now, look. You are free. I'm free, You need to record God. the miracle, you sister. Uh, I, I'm a hairdresser, and during praise and worship, I felt a lot of pain whenever I clapped my hands unto the Lord. And now Glory you can. To God, the pain is gone. Now you're going to keep saying hallelujah. From both hallelujah. my arms. Glory to God. Is there anyone else, folks, who has received their healing? There at the very end, you. What happened, sister? I was having shoulder pain, Dr. Suarez. Um, it's been over a week, but now it's gone. We won't have enough time to hear all the others now. But if God has healed you, lift up your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause. Say, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. My dear brother, we are going to say another prayer soon. Just believe. There was a person who had a pain in their heels. Dr. Schweiz, it felt as if my heel was cracked. See if it's gone now, because while I was talking, the Lord was also healing people's feet. God never stops healing people's feet. Who is this person who was, who was having this pain in their left heel? Back over there, there's a sister there. Go there because I want to hear this. What has happened to you? I was feeling so much pain in my heel that I couldn't even walk. Oh, now glory it's gone. to God. In Isn't the name Jesus, of Jesus wonderful, folks? He deserves a big round of applause. Let's praise him some more. Now, so there in a little while, you should get ready. It's always good to watch the faith show or to come on the live service because the Lord's been doing mighty wonders. And now let's hear the first question, shall we? Dr. Suarez, how can we deal with weakness in our spiritual lives? It's just like any type of physical weakness. When you're physically weak, you need to take vitamins. And what vitamins should you take for your spiritual life? The Word of the Lord God and prayer. And sometimes fasting. If you're a little weak, start fasting. Break down your flesh. Take the promises of God. Meditate on them. Write down whatever I've preached during the service. When you get home, read it. Meditate on it. At least write down the biblical references. Dr. Suarez, this, 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 and that. Study all of those verses until you understand them. Oh Lord, this is where my blessing is. Suddenly the strength will come. Second question. Dr. Suarez, is it acceptable for a Christian family to participate in occupations and invasions? Mm -mm 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 -mm. We need to separate from these worldly manifestations. Someone will have to pay the price for all of these invasions. We have a means whereby we seek everything from God through prayer. Once I read an article about an American family and I really loved it. The son asked for a pair of shoes and the parents could afford it. Son, you're going to have to pray. And the son started praying and he could buy it, but he felt like he shouldn't do it. So one day someone else said, look, I felt like buying you some shoes. Let's go to the store. And the son was happy. God has heard my prayer. So they were teaching their son to depend upon God. 
This is something very important. We need to learn how to depend on the Lord. Amen. Let us now talk to the people and open up our hearts, shall we? Dr. Suarez, recently I have been feeling terribly anguished. I've been hearing some people talk about the second coming of Jesus, and this has caused me to have feelings that I didn't used to have before. Whenever I used to hear that, I would believe in it and I'd feel happy, knowing that Jesus will come back to gather his people. Nowadays, however, when I hear anything about that, I feel afraid, and I have thoughts that make me sad. I think that I may not be raptured, that I'll be left behind, and this leaves me terrified. I've known the Word of God since I was a child. My mother always taught me the Lord's way, and for that reason, I didn't use to fear. Nowadays, I've been distant from church, but I always seek the presence of the Lord, and I read the Bible consistently. I know that the Lord has chosen me. He has already given me proof of that, and I want to take hold of my victory. I don't want to give the enemy any leeway anymore. Dr. Suarez, please tell me, how can I become confident in view of this situation? Run back to church because uh, Jesus could take a little bit longer to return. Then you could die while, while you're out of fellowship with him. Seek, the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is a manner of some. You must be established in the faith. Then you'll become a blessing and you'll feel confident. If he comes tonight, I'm ready to go up with him. Tonight, tomorrow, or any other time. Don't let anything separate you from the Lord God. Folks, let us all stand for us to say another prayer now, for us to seek the presence of the Lord. Look what God's already done. He'll do it again now. First, I'll pray for those at home, then I'll pray with you. Close your eyes. Father, I go back into your presence now. Now it's not just the arms, now it's the legs, the torso. Lord, it's any part of the body from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. I pray for their financial, emotional, and family life. Wherever the problem might be, God, we ask you, come personally here and work in these people's lives. Touch this person who is in such need of your help. I join my faith in theirs right now, and I'm going to rebuke this evil that has gone into this person's finger and hasn't come out yet. Devil, come out of there now in the name of Jesus. Get out of their head. Get out of any other area. In the name of Jesus, I am commanding you. 